Actually, be great. I think that this one is going to be better. And here. <laughs> so, okay. So Terry Bean, thank you for coming on the show. Well, I'm going to jump right into this and I'm going to tell you a story that I don't think you completely understand about how this whole thing is going to come back to what I want to talk about you with you today on the show. So you introduced me to a guy by the name of Frank Agan. I did. He does the uh, charitable round table. Uh, I had a conversation with Frank. Frank then introduced me to Dr. Wayne Baker. Dr. Local Wayne boy Baker. here in the, in the Ann Arbor area. Correct. So Dr. Wayne Baker is a, um, part of the uh, organization that founded the University of Michigan Ross School of Business Center for Positive Organizations. Mm -hmm. Love that. uh, Dr. Baker is actually the guest on episode 99 of the So You're in Sales podcast. And the topic of the podcast that Dr. Baker and I did is all around the importance of asking. And in that episode, we discussed his research and what he was able to deduce from all of the time that he spent investigating why people have a very difficult time getting the things they want. And what he found in his research was, it's not that there aren't people who aren't willing to do things for you. It's most of us are not willing to make the ask that we really need in order to get the things that we really want. So Terry Bean, you in this stage of your career, are at a moment when asking is of tremendous importance to you. And let's discuss, let's unpack why is asking very important for Terry Bean in this stage of his career? What's going on with you and why is asking important? You know, it's funny that you say that because let's be honest, asking is super important at all stages of your career, right? But the challenge with people in their ask is A, we're not confident in doing it. B, we may not know what we're asking for. C, we don't know how to word it specifically. D, we don't know who to ask, right? And four, we never want to just be that guy that's always ask, 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 you know? So we had talked a little bit in a previous recording that no one's ever going to hear, by the way. The basement uh, tapes. The basement tapes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, right. We'll come out with the, uh, the extra deep cut section later on, maybe. Um, we had talked about, you know, if you make a bunch of deposits into your relationship capital account, sooner or later, you should be able to make some withdrawals. And, and so you and I had talked about the idea that uh, deposit, 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 right? And, and at infinitum, um, but never really doing a good job of making those requests back. So why is it important for me at this time? Well, mostly because unlike before, when the joke was, if you asked 10 people, what does Terry Bean do? You'd get 10 smiles and nine different answers. Now it should be, if you ask 10 people what Terry Bean does, they should be like, oh, he's an insurance. He's an insurance. He does insurance. He does commercial insurance. He does residential insurance. He does home or auto insurance, whatever the case may be. It should be real specific. And if it should be that specific and people can, uh, if I can own spot one in people's mental Rolodex, right, as the insurance guy, um, then my ask should be clearer. It should be easier. It should be more relatable. It should be all those things that the right ask should be. Yes, sir. There it is. All right. And so after our basement tape discussion, (laughs) there was a, a moment of revelation where you and I both came to a mutual conclusion that not only are we going to try to overcome whatever obstacle we've created for ourselves in the sense of our willingness to ask, even more importantly, and what I really, this is like the focal point of where I really want to bring this discussion to its, to its hottest is it's sometimes the size of the ask that is the obstacle that we create for ourselves in our own minds. And so let's talk a little bit about as we're considering this for ourselves, you did something you made a big old ask and it actually came true for you. So I want to hear about how you coached yourself into a moment when you made a great big ask of somebody and what happened as a result of that ask that you made. 
You know, it's funny because I, I think you're referring to the Moonshots podcast. Right. Um, and it's interesting that today is the day on LinkedIn that I posted. There, there was a, people on Instagram recreated famous art pieces using Simpsons stuff. And so my favorite artist is Salvatore Dali. And they recreate, if you go look at my LinkedIn today, and I'm talking to you, Roger, not the audience right now, but you'll see the melted clock piece that Dolly did with all kinds of Simpsons stuff. And as I was posting about it, I I had stalked, literally stalked Al Jean, who's the executive producer and showrunner, and in literally named episode one of The Simpsons. And he's been running the show for over 20 of the 30 seasons. Seven years in a row, I asked him to speak at TEDx Detroit because he's a Farmington Harrison grad. He's, he's literally from my hometown. I had no idea. I found out I made it my mission and really truly due to COVID, right? Because our 2020 version was virtual. He was able to actually present at TEDx Detroit. So that was a huge ask that I, I repeated and did frequently and came true. Much like this moonshots thing that you're referring to, um, not to suggest that your podcast isn't fa- fabulous or my podcast that I've been doing for five or six years isn't fabulous, but this moonshots thing is the, my favorite format of any show I've heard. Um, and so I've been listening to these guys for about a month. I found them because I was looking for a podcast on Ryan Holiday. And I started listening. And I was like, man, I just dug into their catalog. And I've probably listened to 50 or 60 episodes in the last 30, 45 days. And they always say, hey, if you've got someone you'd like to hear from, or you'd like to hear us learn out loud from, let us know. So I shouted out Bob Berg, who I'm a big fan of, and he's a friend of mine. And I shouted out Dan Millman, who wrote a book called Way of the Peaceful Warrior, amongst other books. But Way of the Peaceful Warrior was a book I read at 21 years old that that really solidified my journey down a spiritual path. And uh, they they just did that episode. And it was so fun because I'm driving home, I'm listening to, I'm listening to their show. And all of a sudden I hear, and hey, we'd like to thank Terry Bean for this recommendation. We'll be doing this Dan Millman episode. I was like, I'm Terry Bean. <laughs> it was like, these guys are all over the globe and doing really cool stuff. So to, to hear your name on someone else's podcast, when you really haven't spoken with anybody, it's a, it's a, I don't know. I'm maybe I'm a, attention whore who knows but i thought it was really cool (laughs) well you know uh there's a reason why i wanted to ask you that and part of what i really enjoy when i'm listening to those guys on moonshots is their community is not local it's not regional it's not continental it's global absolutely and they're speaking in a voice that is resonating around the world by taking content that other thought leaders have created and organizing it in a new way for you to think about the things that had originally been presented. And so it takes something that someone else did and they somehow make it sort of uniquely their own. And I'm not trying to flatter you, Terry, when I say the TEDx Detroit brand has been around long enough that when you attend that event, when I attend that event and I look at the roster of people who are in the room, it's it's amongst the best networking events that you could participate in, in in our economy. And everyone there has some kind of connection to you, which means from a visibility perspective, there's opportunity for you in the role that you occupy at PKIG. And yet, even though you've built up this reputation, even though I too, in my, what I've authored and what the, you know, the pieces of content that I create, I have a sizable audience of people that don't buy from me. And yet when it comes time for me to try to impress upon people who should be buying from me, what my ability is, they've not interacted with any of that to know that I would be a credible source for them. And so this comes back to this whole, when you put all those credits in the Goodwill bank and you don't 
try to use them to your advantage when you're really what you're doing is saying to the person on the other end of the, the opportunity is I'm actually quite good at what I do. And I believe that what I'm going to show you is going to be of real value to you. So why would we not make those asks? And that's where really, I think, in a, and I don't think this is a Terry Bean problem or a Roger Burnett problem. I think there's a lot of salespeople out there that have done all of this amazing work, this hard work, this investment in their own credibility and their trustworthiness to then not go the rest of the way, right? And that's where the real rub is, I think. I said it on a comment to a friend of mine out of Chicago's post, a guy named JD. I don't remember exactly what his post was, but my comment was, if you believe, if you truly believe that you're adding value to someone's life and you don't ask to do that, you're doing a disservice to you and they. Yeah. And, and to some extent, I feel like we have to, we have to own that. We have to, we have to take that to heart and more importantly, we have to take action in that mindset, in that belief. And, and we have to take stock in it and do the things that, that, that person would be doing. So you sent me a note and call it a mantra, a slogan, uh, raison d'etre whatever however you say that in french like your reason for being <laughs> i like uh, that one let's 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 unpack this a little bit like when you know your why it's supposed to make it easier i think you know your why pretty well i think i know my why really well but there's this word it's the what is your manifestation of your why so it's one thing to have your why. And there's so much talk right now on any podcast out there about it's important to find your why and read these books and all of those purpose, things. Okay, purpose, okay. purpose. Great. You have, okay, you got it. Now what? What do you do with what you've done in a way that will allow you to achieve your objective, which is supposed to be the whole reason why you get to your why is so that you can get through all of the stuff that you're going to have to go through in order to actually achieve the thing that your why is supposed to set you onto. And you used a word or a little slogan. Do you remember what you, what you said you were going to do? So you said, I'm going to be ginormous. No, I, I, yeah. It's not only did I send you a, uh, a little slogan, I sent you a three minute self-talk audio that I recorded on my way home from work one day because, um, there's a in the in the office right behind me is our commercial insurance office and there's a there's a picture and i think it's dicaprio in the wolf of wall street and the it says something to the extent of the only thing that stands between you and your dreams are the bullshit stories you keep telling yourself and eventually eventually i think people who either have the capacity or desire or both to perform at a higher level, to achieve at a higher level, we have to get sick of eating our own bullshit yep. because we have to. And in, in, in order to, to get to that level, you have to step up and you have to continually step up. I'm, uh, I'm showing this mug. And so <laughs> on the back of it, it says hashtag step TFU. Yeah. Right. And that was a that was a slogan or a, a refrain that came out of PK, Phil Klein of PKIG, Phil Klein Insurance Group, when he took the leadership team to Vegas. Yeah. Right. That was that was the mantra. Step the F up. And so now, now I carry it around with me as a reminder. So, yeah, for me, being ginormous, right? Um, it reminds me of that whole Marianne Williamson quote that was popularized by Nelson Mandela, that our greatest fear isn't that we're playing this life too small. Our greatest fear is that we're bigger than we can possibly imagine. And I, I'm bastardizing and paraphrasing and <laughs> messing it all up but it's worth the three minutes to go listen to marianne williamson our greatest fear it'll fire you the f up um so i i yeah i gotta i gotta i gotta be ginormous man i have too many people depending on me 
to keep playing so small. And it's one thing to know when you're going into a poker match with no money in your pocket and the pressure on the win is that much more amplified because if you lose, it's not just that you lost, it's there's going to be consequence for that loss. But in this environment, in what you've done in your career, you have all the money you need in your pocket from Goodwill to go do the thing. And so that manifestation in a lot of ways is this uh, neural pathway connection in your own brain to say like, okay, no, I have the money in my pocket. Like, I don't have to be worried about playing this game because I've done what's necessary to give me a shot at really having what it's going to take to make what PKIG is trying to get to actually happen. Because clearly the people who have invested their belief in us have an expectation that that's what we're capable of doing. And so it's sort of our responsibility to get past that so that we can reward ourselves and reward the people who are investing that confidence in us with the results that they believe that we're capable of. Now, granted, we've got to have the tools in place to be able to kind of make that occur. But when you have the controls and you have the reins and you have that pocket full of goodwill cash at your disposal, game on, baby, let's go. It's the casino and it's the perfect storm of opportunity. So for me, I wanted to tell you that that did something for me as well. And when you told me that whole concept of I've got to be ginormous, while I identify with that as a slogan, I'm like, I'm going to let Terry Bean have that one. <laughs> Here's the one that Roger Burnett has. And this is probably the first time I've said this on this podcast or really to a large audience of people at once. Our company's vision is to have a team of salespeople in various Metro Detroit communities that we've hired, trained, and uh, put out successful salespeople from those communities to sell into those communities. And ultimately, if they're successful enough, we'd like to put them on a path to ownership. And so I expect that my sales team will be very young people that won't have any sales experience or very limited sales experience that we are going to literally teach them how to do what we do in a way that would honor them and allow them the opportunity to sort of manifest themselves. And so Terry, yours is, I'm going to be ginormous. Mine is, I'm, I'm here for the kids. I'm here for Probably. the kids. And if I start telling that story in a more purposeful and intentional kind of way, when people can see the vision of what it is that this company is trying to accomplish, that's our ticket to being able to have those conversations in the places that we need to be in order to have the relationships that would be necessary to fuel our success sufficiently large enough to make that vision come true. So when I get up every day now, since you've had that conversation with me, I think about Terry being ginormous, watching you do what you did with the Moonshots podcast to say like, hey, what the hell, let's see what happens. And giving me the inspiration to then like remind myself every day, like, what are you doing this for? You're doing it for the kids. You're doing it for the kids, keep going. So in a lot of ways, I just wanted to thank you for that. And like, for me, I hope that this provides some semblance of motivation to other salespeople who might be listening to this in this moment, because here's the thing, Terry, mask mandates are relaxing. It looks like it's gonna kind of go back to be whatever it's gonna be. If you've been waiting for your moment, don't wait anymore, it's time. It's time. And whatever it is that you're motivated by, remind yourself, tattoo it on your arm, make it a bumper sticker, I don't care. But if you don't have that inside you yet, figured out for yourself, stop right now and do it because you're going to need that fuel because this thing is going to be the biggest fish in the pond, crazy moment that you've ever seen because everyone's going to come back. They have money in their pocket. They want to be successful. They're probably changing jobs. There's all of these dynamics all at play, which gives you and I and everyone else listening to what we're talking about right now, probably one of once in a lifetime kind of opportunity. So we need to be ginormous, my friend. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And I want to, I want to, I want to step back to what you said earlier in that, in that rant or dissertation or soliloquy or whatever you'd like to call it. Um, you said purposeful and intentional. And I think those are really, really important words. And the things that I would add to them are twofold consistency and frequency, yeah. right? Because it's, it's the, the, the clearer and the, the, um, the more purposeful and intentional you are, that's great. 
but I've been purposeful. I've been intentional, but if I'm not consistent and I'm not frequent, it's who cares, yeah. right? You got to get that message out and you got to have it hit people the right way. And you may have to test it and you may have to play with it a little bit for sure. But the idea is get it out. So often we're like, I'm going to, I'm going to work on this until I get it right. Yeah. Forget about perfection, yeah. right? Get it out, get some feedback, refine it, do it again. And, and I got to give a shout out to my pal, Charlie Wahlberg, who came up with one of my all time favorite phrases. And it was simply this start again tomorrow, start right? Again. We're going to fall off. Things are not going to go the way we want. We're going to kick them in the nuts. We're going to do whatever. And it's not going to have the result we want. And that's okay. Start again tomorrow. Or we're not going to do the thing, right? How many times have you like, oh, I'm going to the gym at 5.30 in the morning? <laughs> no, you're not. Maybe you <laughs> did, but you're not going to do it five days in a row. It's okay. Start again tomorrow. Yeah, man. I don't think we need to belabor that point. I think that's probably the best place to leave it is get, get it figured out, know why you're doing it, and then go do the shit. Do it. Just go do it because... Until we do it, and in what is literally the best opportunity most of us are going to have in our lifetimes to realize some significant results, if you are at all motivated by this, let us know. Talk to Terry. Talk to Roger. We'd love to be a part of what you're doing. We'd love to hear your successes. And if this in any way, shape, or form motivated you to do something, we'd love, love, love to hear about it. Terry Bean, thanks, man. My pleasure, uh, bud. Thanks for having me on. No anchor moment here, eh, boy? <laughs> Not yet, man. <laughs> I had to go get a new anchor, by the way. That's happening this weekend. <laughs> cool, man. I haven't care. been on the damn boat.